Hey, it's Joel. Chess is a really fun game and it's kind of fun to play, even though checkers is fun, shoots and ladders is fun, Monopoly's fun. Chess, it's the game of kings, or it's the game that Sean needs to learn. Yes, I do. But what I want to do is print my own chess set and I don't want to take a lot of time to do it. So I'm going to use duplication mode on a printer that has two independent extruders and print the chess set twice as fast. And then we're going to make a chess board and we're going to do it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Hey look, a video that's not sponsored. This is because of people like those who support us on Patreon, people that support via the website, or people that join and become members on YouTube. A big thanks for all of those wonderful, supportive people that make this possible. Let's start with the chess pieces themselves. There's a user on Thingiverse, NTX9, and it's called an organic chess set they've created. It's a really cool model, and it's got a king, a queen, uh, pawns, bishops, knights, and rooks, and they're all there. They're beautiful models. They don't look like the easiest models to print either. They're all spiraled all the way up to the top. So I want to print those, but what I want to do is use the Maker Gear M3. It has dual independent extruders, and using SpongeBob 3D, I could put it into duplication mode. So I give it one set of G code and both extruders print the same G code. What it does is it halves the build plate so that the extruders move into place and then they print at the same time. We're gonna use these two filaments for it. We've got Polyalchemy Elixir Silver. Although it's not, it's got some, it's got some color in it. A little blue maybe? A little blue, That's something. I like it, the color is great. And then I'm gonna use uh, Night Sky from Polyalchemy. It's their elixir, it looks really good. Can you get a look at that? These are the filaments we're going to use. And using SpongeBob 3D, what we're going to do is set four top layers, three bottom layers, two perimeters, 15% infill. Each extruder on the nozzle is going to be 200 degrees Celsius, and the bed will be at 65 degrees Celsius. And then we just let it print. Chantage of it printing on the mic, 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 maker gear M3. Here are the silver pieces. I want to say they turned out pretty darn well. They're not perfect. I'll be the first to admit that. But I think in the configuration everything was printing, I think they turned out phenomenally well. We've got our rooks, we've got our knights, we've got our bishops, we've got our king and queen, and we have a bunch of pawns. Perfect! And these are our pieces that are in the night sky. They're not perfect either, but I believe they are better than the silver. Let's start with the pawns. They all printed fairly similarly. I think that the build quality is decent. Uh, I'm seeing some seams. That's kind of detracting away from it. The undersides are okay. Possibly could have been better with some cooling. Um, the nozzle on the Maker Gram 3 is 0.35 that I have loaded right now. I, I mean, really, these, <laughs> these look really good. They're not perfect, but they look really, really good. The rooks are a very special piece in this set. They are, they're exquisite. I'm not gonna lie. The design on the outside is fantastic. And on the inside, there is a staircase going up to the top. This looks very much like what uh, a resin printer would be printing to kind of show off its abilities. And so for me to look at both of these, which came from the Maker Gear M3, an FDM style 3D printer, and to see the quality it was able to print these at, I'm kind of blown away. Here are the bishops, and they look very, very similar. I think that the printer did a good job with both of these. Actually, with the bishops, I would say they're the same. They would look really cool, really big. They'd look really cool, really big, but these are normal sized, so I'm just gonna say these look the same. The knights are kind of interesting, and the way that this print worked out is it started the head right down here and printed that up at the same time and it looks like there is a design in the model for the head. You get to see the mane and kind of like this, this design on the side. The eyes are hollow. Both extruders or both nozzles were able to print the ears of the knight. That's just extraordinary. Very small details. I think partially due to the smaller nozzle and partially due to the airflow. Did a good job. <laughs> now we're getting to the meat and potatoes. This is the queen. There is a face on the inside here. There is a face. And if I look, both extruders were able to reproduce it at least to a point where I could tell it's a face. 
it's not the best face, but FDM Machines did an okay job with this. Uh, the Queen, a little bit taller. Uh, let's see, great, great detail. I would classify the sky blue one better than the silver. That's just me. Last and certainly not least is the King. The King is a phenomenal model and it is extraordinary. If you look right here, the cross and the King's helmet, it doesn't look like it's supported by anything. It looks like it's in the middle of something. Like there's, the cross exists in a hole for some reason. It looks really cool. Uh, the build quality on the King is, is decent on the blue. It looks like the cross messed up on the silver one. It's okay though on the other side, so it's still good enough, I think. I mean, I'm happy with these prints, and all of these prints are good enough to have us a game. Now that we have the pieces though, what we need to do is make ourselves a chessboard, and rather than print it, I have an idea, and it's going to involve the laser cutter. Here we go. This is a small piece of plywood. What I'm gonna do is cover it with blue tape. The laser will burn through the blue tape and I'll burn a grid pattern. I will burn out squares that are gonna be darker and for the squares that are gonna be lighter, I'll leave the tape there. And then once the laser's done, I'll hit it with some primer, I'll hit it with some paint, probably blue because I like blue, and then we should have ourselves a chessboard because then I can just take the tape off and we should be good to go. And then maybe we can teach Sean how to play chess. Very good, thanks. The reason I'm putting blue tape down, when the laser is burning the wood, the border of where it's etching leaves a little bit of a residue. And I think it's because this is a plywood and there's some glues that are holding the layers together. What you can do is put down tape and then the residue won't get on the wood and you won't have to sand it when you're done in order to get that residue off. So I wasn't as careful as I could be on the edges. So what I'm gonna do is double it up. Won't that make it so it's not even? I don't think so. I think that the tape is such not a big deal for the, for the laser power, it's just gonna cut right through it. We'll find out if that's right. This is covered in blue tape. Let's take it down to the laser and cut ourselves a chessboard. The mirrors on my laser are off a little bit, which means the beam isn't as focused as it should be, and it doesn't cut all the way through. I can take uh, uh, a sort of exact zero, and I could uh, cut it here, cut it here, and then on the other side, because the laser isn't as focused as it could be, then some of the, well, the tape wasn't burned through, so just need a chisel to clear that up. And once it's cleared up, then we can paint it. Looks like it's done, or at least it's dry. Well, dry to the touch. This is from the, the sprayer, so that doesn't count. Now it's time to peel back the blue tape, which should reveal the lighter colored wood. And, uh, ooh, look at that. That is spectacular. Got a lot of other blue squares to take off. Let's get that done real quick, and then let's take a look at the hopefully finished chessboard. Look at that, look at that. That is fantastic, wow. Okay, look, I know it's not perfect and that's okay because one of the things that I like about what I do here is that I'm gonna show you all of my failures and there are many all the time. Now, all my prints aren't perfect, so it's important to show you that um, I messed up in certain ways. But when you mess up, the important thing to take from that is the lesson that you learn so that you don't do the same thing next time. And what I've learned here is that uh, Layering the tape is a bad idea. I know that I need to properly calibrate the mirrors and the laser so that I don't uh, I don't burn unevenly. But other than that, I've got a fully functional chessboard. Let's get rid of these. Let's put the pieces on the board. And let's see if they fit.
Look at that. This actually turned out better than I could have possibly expected. I did a 10 inch by 10 inch grid and then the pieces were sized appropriately. Um, each of the squares takes up, what, a 1.25 inches? Like you know, something like that. <laughs> this is kind of cool. I made this. Like I said, it's not perfect, but I, I made this. And it's a chessboard, and it's a checkers board, and it's uh, something that allows people to play a really fun game together. And maybe Sean will learn. Yes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I had a really good time making this, and I hope it's inspired you to make and create, repurpose, and just have a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. I like that I learned what to do next time that might make it a little bit better, but I have a fully functioning board here with chess pieces ready to go. Thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching it this far. If you made it all the way to the end, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. I love you all, as always. High five.